Welcome to the show, everybody. It's the Crypto Lark. We're coming at you from Hong Kong, Token 2049. I have with me Jacob from Lisk. Jacob, welcome. Hi, guys. Thank you. Looking forward to speaking with you. Now, what is Lisk doing here in Hong Kong? So, Lisk, one of our most active uh, communities and most sort of dynamic communities are based out in Asia. We have a huge following in Japan, especially in China, mm -hmm. in Korea. It's where we see a lot of our volume coming from. So, we feel like we need to be as active as possible in Asia, which is one of the reasons we're here. Also, it's a fantastic opportunity to network, to hear some great talks, as I'm sure you've heard. And it's an absolute pleasure to be out here. It's snowing in Berlin as well. It's sunny here, which always <laughs> helps. That's definitely a positive, without a doubt. And if anyone's been following Lisk's Twitter, you guys are here all the time. I've seen quite a few of, you know, you guys are in Korea and you're in Japan and you're out there, you're meeting people. And what's the response been from the, I guess, the Asian community, you know, the people you've been meeting? Are people interested in developing on Lisk? Are developers, you know, getting excited about Lisk? Very much so. It's very positive, to be honest. We did an Asia tour not too long ago, about six months ago. And we're sort of still seeing the after effects of that. We're meeting people that we met back then. Awesome. Um, and we're seeing a lot of, like, positive response from that. So it's it's nice to come back here and touch base and keep building those bonds for the future. That's awesome. Now, Jacob, you are particularly involved with the Lisk Academy. That's right. Yes. What is that? Can you tell us about it? So, the way I see it, one of the biggest problems to adoption right now is for understanding. Um, awareness isn't a problem, obviously, because cryptocurrencies are quite a hyped up concept. But I feel that one of the only ways they're spoken about is about Bitcoin going up or Bitcoin going down. Yeah. You see a lot of news reports where the the person reporting clearly doesn't know what they're talking about, <laughs> essentially. Um, and I feel like we need more educational platforms that aren't there to make money and that aren't to push an agenda like a marketing tool. So we've created the Lisk Academy. It's a completely unbiased, completely free, completely open platform um, teaching people about blockchain technology. So it ranges from everything from explain blockchain technology like I'm five years old, right down to consensus protocols um, and everything in between, essentially. So you can just dive in and start learning about blockchain within minutes, essentially. That's awesome. I think it's so important too, to actually educate people on it because it's a learning curve. Exactly. And most people don't realize how much of a learning curve it is. I mean, for people who've been in it for a while, we kind of forget like, Ah, that was hard. Exactly, exactly. That was the biggest <laughs> challenge I faced. It was sort of when I was writing it, you had to sort of take the steps back to where we were when we started getting involved. When you see these long strings of numbers and letters that you're sending your money to, you're like, is it, am I doing this right? This can go so wrong. There's so many, yeah. so many mistakes to be made. And we're sort of trying to cut those out and sort of re reduce the fear factor to getting into this amazing space. That's great. It's you know, education is so important. It's, you know, it's why we do this, you know, we're out exactly. here talking to people all the exactly. time, trying to spread information, spread awareness about projects. And that's absolutely awesome. Now, what about regulations? Obviously here we are in Hong Kong where it's a rather liberal crypto climate, but only 20 kilometers yeah. from here across the border, the situation is very different. So how is Lisk kind of, I guess, wading through those difficult waters of regulation here in Asia? I mean, here in Asia, well, like you said, it varies very much from place to place. You see it's very liberal here. It's a bit, uh, well, way less liberal, a bit further. Places like Japan are very developed in their sort of perceptions and approaches to cryptocurrency. So it's very much dependent on a place to place basis. Um, but I do think one of the things that you see is that places like Japan are so liberal and so progressive because they've had these, these difficulties essentially. And I feel that in cryptocurrency and in blockchain in general, um, you learn and you develop and you get your head around the concept through these difficult challenges. So you have Mount Gox in Japan, and I feel like that's sort of put them a few steps ahead in knowing how to approach cryptocurrencies now. Um, so to answer your question, it's very much a dynamic system varying from place to place. But we're obviously based out in Switzerland, the Lisk Foundation, so it's a very liberal place there. Um, Germany is where our offices are as well. It's also very progressive in yeah. regards. So I mean, I think how the crypto community reacts to certain places is very much based on how progressive they are in regards to the technology. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really interesting to see just the vastly different approaches around the world. Yeah. You know, I feel like Japan is one of the countries that's probably done it the best. Yeah, I agree. Overall, you know, I mean, obviously countries like Switzerland are doing really, you know, they're ahead of the game, without yeah. a doubt. Yeah. yeah. And what about in Germany? How's the regulation scene there as far as, you know, I guess the whole thing? It's, it's positive. It really is very progressive um, in terms of how they tax cryptocurrencies. It's very forward thinking. Um, it actually encourages you to hodl. Um, in that, <laughs> if you hodl a crypto asset for over a year, you don't pay taxes on it. Yep, so nice. which, is, which is always a nice incentive to hodl if you didn't already have one. Um, so it's very progressive, I'd say. It's one of the reasons we're out in Berlin. 
nice. Now, obviously the LISC Academy is an amazing educational tool for people and that's, that's I think, one of the social goods that LISC is delivering, but what about some other social goods? What are some other ways in which LISC can, I guess, be a positive force for, you know, good in the world? Well, I mean, we, we, I'm sure we're aware that blockchain technology is this positive technology in itself that's going to improve the world. Um, and we're sort of breaking down the barriers to entry into blockchain by allowing mm -hmm. JavaScript developers um, to enter this space. Because right now, the way we see it is that there's this amazing pool of talent of JavaScript developers um, who don't want to learn Solidity. Like, from my experience, Solidity isn't the easiest thing to get your mm -hmm. head around. It's not the most pleasant coding language to use. Um, whereas JavaScript is probably on the opposite of the end of the spectrum. Um, it's quite easy, it's quite simple, it's quite straightforward. And we want to open up this, this door, this gateway to blockchain technology by allowing JavaScript developers to get in and sort of further the use of blockchain technology as a whole. I think it's really important that you guys are doing this. And it, I've always seen it as, to, to an extent, a weakness with Ethereum that they do have this separate development language that people have to learn. And whereas if you're, you're going with Lisp, where the developers already are, instead of asking them to come to you, you're going to them. Exactly, exactly. It's how we approach a lot of our conferences as well, rather than going to blockchain conferences and teaching people about JavaScript. It's more a case of going to JavaScript conferences and teaching people about blockchain and about Lisp, because like I said, there's this pool of talent out there already um, that doesn't necessarily even know about blockchain technology. Mm -hmm. Very, very interesting. Now, I guess in a specifically in an Asia context, what are some of the things that you see, I guess, being built on LISP? What, what is LISP going to do for Asia? Well, I mean, Asia obviously has a very, very active um, development community, probably one of the most so in the world. Um, so it's just about giving this tool to Asia and seeing what they do with it, because LISP is very much a tool that um, the value comes from the person who's holding it. Yeah. So um, we want to give this tool to Asia, and obviously it's already quite an exciting environment in that you have platforms like Neo out here, and you see how Neo is growing. You see some of the ICOs that have happened on Neo. It's very, it's obviously a very positive um, place for blockchain. We sort of want to give all the JavaScript developers of Asia the opportunity to get into the space as well. Great. And so. When are we going to see some uh, LISC-based ICOs coming out? So it's definitely this year. Um, so our core, which is one of the aspects of our tool suite that allow people to do these ICOs and build these apps, um, is on the testnet. So Great. I mean, testnet to, to mainnet. I hate giving numbers because it's all very dynamic, about six to eight weeks is it, of what I yeah. to guess. Um, and then you've got this tool suite essentially where you can start building, developing ICOs. So I'd say definitely within the end of the year, you'll see some very, very exciting ICOs going on on LISC. Um, and we would very much want to support this. So Max Kordek, our founder, has also opened up a personal project in that he's um, funding ICOs that happen on LISC. So it's about 1.7 million LISC tokens. He's opened up his personal funds to encourage people to do these ICOs, to give them mm -hmm. that first step up. Because um, one of the first challenges you face when running an ICO is that initial setting it up and stuff yeah. because it's not that you have money from the start you need to organize this show your team write the white paper and that's a barrier to entry that we want to sort of break down as much as possible as well yeah of course especially at that initial stage inviting people saying hey come on build on us versus the other guys exactly right? exactly but people regard ICOs as just suddenly you have loads of money but it's, <laughs> it's not exactly how it works um, there's a lot of planning that goes into it especially if, well I mean if you're a legit project you need to plan you need to build your team out and you don't just get that out of nowhere so we want to sort of break down that barrier as well to, to running your own project on this that's pretty cool that's pretty cool now what about the the future I guess of cryptocurrencies where do you see us being in you know five years for example I mean, we're now in the adoption phase, I'd say, more or less. Um, the awareness phase sort of came last year, especially towards the end of last year, mm. um, with a sort of massive bull run we went on. I think adoption is now sort of going to start coming into place. Um, obviously, that depends a lot on how fast understanding progresses, because in between awareness and adoption, there is an understanding phase, um, which is where things like the Lisk Academy are sort of trying to speed that up. Um, but I think before the end of the year, we're going to see cryptocurrencies very much in the mainstream. Yeah, I think it's going to be a very exciting year for seeing projects built. I mean, already there's so many projects coming out every day as it is, and those are mostly based on Ethereum. We have a no. few coming out on Neo, we have a few coming out on NEM, a few coming out on Qtum, but really, as you know, Lisk comes online and uh, the other guys as well, we're going to see just this amazing plurality of really exciting projects being developed, which you know I think is going to be just such an exciting year for these different things being built new ideas coming in all the time and 
it's just five years from now, Imagine just where we're going to be. It's, exactly. it's, actually, it's, it's crazy. It's it's I don't think you can even imagine it to be no. honest. I think some of the platforms, I don't know if you saw the Craig Wright talk today where he was talking about some of the capabilities of the Bitcoin Cash blockchain, how you can do things on that as well. Um, I think that some of the biggest innovations are going to come from places we don't even expect it. And I think that's one of the most exciting things about being in this space. Yep. It changes so quickly. There's so much positivity about it, such a community. And it's just so nice to watch it grow from day to day. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's it's a cool community to be a part of and I guess that's perhaps the final question here for you. The Lisk community, how, how is it being built, how is it growing and how are you planning to continue to build that community in the future? I mean, so we have one of the most active communities, I'd say, in blockchain, very positive. Um, our Reddit channel is always like full of people talking about Lisk, about the innovations we're planning. And it's a very supportive community as well. You see that in Lisk chat as well. So we already have a very, very solid community. Um, looking forward into building out the community is once again sort of the aspect of the Lisk Academy. Um, I feel that the place where you first learn about blockchain, where you first send your first cryptocurrency, is going to be a sort of loyalty you have. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, like, I, I personally hold the first token I ever bought because it's just sort of, I feel like that's what got me into <laughs> awesome. um, cryptocurrencies. And you just sort of have this loyalty. So we're sort of building out this community through honest and open education, essentially. That's really cool. And I think, like you said, the the Academy introduces people, yeah. but because it's their first step, they're going to have this positive impression like, wow, that Lisk thing, that was really cool. Exactly. You Never know? forget your first love. There you go. There you go. Jacob, this has been a really interesting chat. Thank Absolute you so much. Absolute pleasure. Cheers.